Although it's not very common for a company like Nintendo to include paid DLC in their games, I thought the expansion pass for Breath of the Wild was a really fun addition to an already great experience. Through this expansion, we were able to play through multiple fun hours worth of bonus content that added to the base game, such as more clever shrines, unique boss fights, and by far my favorite challenge, the Trial of the Sword, an epic 45 room combat dungeon that served as a really fun way to test a player's combat skills and wit through survival. So for the most part, I really happen to like the majority of what this DLC had to offer. But despite all the positives it brings, there has always been one major thing about this expansion that I've always felt quite negative about, and this has to deal with the various rewards you get by completing its challenges and how their massive impact can actually taint the overall flow of the game. Now don't get me wrong, a lot of the rewards you can get in this DLC are really awesome and fun to mess around with, such as an upgraded Master Sword, powerful stat boosting armor, and even a motorcycle. But my biggest problem with all these things is how they can completely simplify the difficulty of the base game with how overpowered and game breaking most of them are. Now it's not to say that the base game doesn't have its own share of powerful items you can obtain, but the biggest difference between these powerful items and the ones obtained in the expansion pass is how much harder the base game makes you work for these items unlike the DLC that basically hands them out like candy. So today, I thought I would go over the various rewards of the expansion pass to figure out exactly which ones were detrimental to the overall experience, how they negatively impacted the core structure of the base game, and what I personally would have changed about them. So in order to best explain the negative impact these items had on the overall experience, I first want to compare the differences between the powerful items in the base game and the ones in the DLC to figure out exactly where these rewards went wrong. Let's take the Barbarian set for an example, which is an item that can be obtained in the base game. While worn in its completion, it offers a massive 50% attack buff, which completely changes the way a player approaches all future combat scenarios in this game. But the catch here is that obtaining this gear is no simple task, as the player will have to clear out three tough labyrinths that lie in complete opposite sides of the map from one another, which probably won't be done in a blind playthrough until the player is at least a good 50 hours into the game, with the majority of the shrines and divine beasts already completed, which feels like a very fair placement for an item this powerful. But for the players who download the DLC, you can easily obtain a very similar set of clothing, the Phantom Armor, which has the exact same attack buffs and even a higher armor rating than the Barbarian set, right after you finish the game's tutorial, just by searching the neighboring Hyrule field. By having such a supplementary item like the Phantom Armor available so early on in the game, it messes up a lot of key things that the base experience try to establish. For one, it ruins the difficulty curve of the whole beginning and mid game by making all the combat and boss encounters much easier than they are ever intended to be. Being able to boast an armor rating of 24 and a constant attack buff of 50% right after the game's tutorial was not how the game was intended to be played, as it makes all the early combat far easier than it should be, which discourages the use of creativity in battles in favor of just using brute force. And secondly, having a powerful item like this thrown into the game so early makes similar and supplementary items feel nearly useless. Early game armor like the Hylian set and the soldier's gear that were once practical in the game's natural progression are now completely pointless to obtain, while late game ones like the Barbarian set are now made to be unsatisfactory, as it only becomes better than the Phantom Armor after several expensive upgrades. And by that point, you're probably so late in the game that most players hardly even care. Now, it's not to say that every single reward from the DLC is this breaking to the game's overall progression, but there still are several other ones that I would like to discuss that I feel like should have been altered more to be balanced with the core game. The Barbarian Armor, in my opinion, just happens to be the most detrimental one, considering that there are no previous requirements to obtain this armor other than just finding its location. But another piece of armor in this DLC that can also be somewhat game-breaking is the Majora's Mask, which, like the Phantom Armor, can be obtained right after being the game's tutorial and going to Hyrule Field. This mask allows you to disguise yourself amongst just about every single major enemy in this game, which instantly puts the game into an easy slash pacifist mode that should not be so easily experienced early on. And just like how the Barbarian set makes other armors like the Hylian and Soldier's Gear useless, the Majora's Mask makes literally every other enemy mask in this game pointless to obtain, as it contains the capabilities of all four of them in one, which is a complete shame considering that there are all really fun items to try to obtain using Mon in the base game. So the biggest problem with both the Phantom Armor and the Majora's Mask is that they make the world of Hyrule a far less vulnerable place than it's ever intended to be, at least in the early game. 
In my opinion, some of the most memorable parts of a first playthrough are when the player runs across a difficult enemy or situation for the first time and tries to overcome it. And although the player might not end up victorious in the end, uses the tough experience as a learning lesson for improving and getting better. But with such powerful items available so early on, it taints the difficulty curve of this game by ruining the satisfaction of learning from this vulnerability. But fortunately, out of all the other treasure based rewards you can find in this expansion pass, I really didn't have a problem with them at all, as they did not involve any major stat boosting properties that offset the balance of this game. Items such as the Royal Guard set, the Tingle set, Minus Helmet, and many more were either purely cosmetic or their boosts were so minor that they never severely adjusted the pacing of this game like the other gear did. So it's fair that you were able to find these items from the very start. But items like the Phantom Gear and Majora's Mask should have been obtainable by harder means other than just finding them in Hyrule Field, as with how powerful they were, should have only been unlockable after completing a much bigger quest or surpassing a major point in the story or DLC. Which leads us into the next topic of this video, the highlight rewards a player can obtain by completing the main challenges of the expansion pass, which are the Enhanced Master Sword, the Upgraded Champion abilities, and even the Master Cycle Zero. Now, one huge thing that separates these rewards from a lot of the other treasure based rewards you can find is that each of them require a lot of the base game to be completed before obtaining, along with multiple tough challenges of their own that act as a prerequisite. The upgraded Master Sword, for an example, not only requires the player to first obtain the Master Sword in the base game, but also the completion of the Trial of the Sword, which is an ultimate test of the player's wit and skill in combat that likely won't be able to be beaten until the late game. The other two rewards, the upgraded champion abilities and the Master Cycle, can only be obtained after completing every single dungeon in the base game and beating the entire champion battle questline that precedes it. Although I'm glad that all these items get introduced much later in the game's progression unlike the armors, I still think that there should have been way more prerequisites before obtaining them, as these rewards are so powerful that each one can completely change the dynamic of the game throughout the entire rest of your playthrough. The Enhanced Master Sword, for an example, not only has an attack output of 60, but also lasts a total of 188 hits, with only a mere 10 minute recharge window. This means that roughly 70 to 80% of all future combat scenarios will be handled exclusively with the Master Sword, which completely throws out the past established combat loop of cycling between new and unique weapons to take down enemies, as now that's only restricted to the small amount of time when the sword needs to recharge. Considering that Breath of the Wild was built around this weapon swapping system, having another system to almost completely override it deteriorates the variety that once made this game's combat so fun. Similar situation with the game's Master Cycle. Although it's really fun to ride around Hyrule in an ancient dirt bike, it practically replaces the entire horse and stable system that is a very key element to the transportation of this game. Despite horses still having some advantages, like the ability to autopilot amongst major roads and the lack of needing to be fueled, the Master Cycle is better in almost every other way. It can overcome some of the game's roughest terrains, can be spawned just about anywhere at any time, and has no way of being killed off like horses can. I will give the developers some credit on this one though, as the DLC also added in the ancient horse armor that allowed horses to stand a chance against the bike by making them faster and allowing them to teleport to you, but there are still far more advantages to the bike where the player will more often than not still choose it over the horses. But as I stated earlier, I think it's fine that powerful items like this are in the game, but I just think that there should have been far more prerequisites required to get them. Although pulling the Master Sword and doing the 4 Divine Beasts are quite hefty tasks to accomplish, a lot of the players will tend to just rush through these things in the main story just to unlock the DLC and reap its overpowered rewards. But after doing this, we'll be discouraged to complete all of this game's fantastic side content, as the rewards will be inconsequential to what they got in the expansion pass. With all of this said though, I truly believe that the best solution to fixing the entirety of the game's DLC problem would be by making all the expansion pass content consisting of the Master Trials, the Champion's Belled, and even all the Treasure Rewards only unlockable after a full completion of the game itself. So not just the Divine Beast and the Master Sword, but also all the memories and even the final showdown with Ganon. Doing this not only moves the DLC rewards to a point where they actually make sense with your progress in the game, but it also adds a proper post game to Breath of the Wild that the fanbase has been asking for for the longest time now. Considering that the player receives no major rewards from beating the base game other than the satisfaction itself, making all the DLC challenges unlockable and adding in the overall chest after the fact would actually make all this work seem worthwhile. After becoming the true hero by unlocking your memories and freeing the Divine Beast, you are finally allowed to expand your spirit even further by restoring the Master Sword to its former glory, unlocking great ancient technologies unseen before, and expanding your magical powers to the fullest potential. 
Although past systems like the stables and weapon cycling will still be overridden, it will now be at a point where the player fully exhausts them, and being overpowered actually feels like a proper next step, unlike how it's currently set up where these rewards were introduced far too early on. Which actually takes me back to when a lot of us first started playing when the game first came out in early 2017. We didn't have the expansions or any of the DLC at launch, so many of us spent dozens upon hundreds of hours doing all the main content and completing all the shrines, without the help of the expansion rewards. And when the first DLC pack, The Master Trials, rolled out later that year, it felt like a worthy addition to our progress, followed by the Champions Ballad six months later, which felt like a great last hurrah to the main events in this game. All of the overpowered DLC items that we received were for the most part obtained at levels when they actually felt well earned and deserved. But with how accessible the overpowered DLC items are to the beginning players nowadays, it completely offsets the balance and challenge of how a first playthrough should be. I'm not saying that a first playthrough with these crutches necessarily turns a good experience into a bad one, but I do believe that having these crutches early on does lessen the experience quite significantly. Which is a shame really, considering that the developers even stated in past interviews that Breath of the Wild is most optimal to play with the DLC installed right away instead of later, which encourages a much lesser experience in my opinion. But coming from someone who has a lot of experience with both the base game before the DLC and after it as well, I recommend to all future players of this game to wait on purchasing it until after you have completely played through the main events of the base game, as it is by far the most optimal way to play. But anyways, what do you guys think about this topic? Feel free to leave any feedback on your thoughts about the rewards of this DLC, as I'm already predicting that there's going to be a lot of various opinions on this subject, as there usually tends to be when I make heavily opinionated videos like this. But regardless, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already to support the channel. Also, a huge shout out to my amazing patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel. If you would like to help me out here as well for as little as a dollar a month, all the info can be found in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.